In this video, we're going to be discussing the EGR system, CAT's CGI system, and why it's better than a traditional EGR system. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the CAT truck engine EGR system. Now, EGR stands for Exhaust Gas Recirculation, and CAT actually didn't call their EGR system EGR. They called it CGI, which stands for Clean Gas Induction. Now, basically, EGR and CGI do the same thing. However, there is a fairly large difference between a CGI system that the CAT truck engines used and a more traditional EGR system that the equipment uses now with the CAT engines and with what Cummins and Detroit and pretty much every other truck engine manufacturer used. And in my opinion, the CAT system was better, although it did create its own problems, and we're gonna be getting into why I think it's better in this video. Now let's pretend for a second you have a canister with a lid that you can open and close. And you take diesel, which its chemical property is called C12H24. I didn't know that before making this video. And actually the carbon, which is the C, can range from 10 to 15, and the hydrogen can range from 20 to 25, but apparently the average is C12H24. So now you know the molecular chemicals that make up diesel. Now, if you put your diesel in this canister and then add another group of molecules, which would be O2, N2, of course that's air, or at least most of what makes up air is oxygen and nitrogen, then combust them under pressure, you get a whole range of items out. You get hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and our friend NOx, which is nitrogen oxides. Now the X in NOx is for the different oxygen molecule numbers because there can be NO1 or NO2 or NO3. There can also be N2O, which is nitrous oxide. However, we're not concerning ourselves with nitrous here. We're talking about NOx. Now, NOx is what they consider a greenhouse gas, and greenhouse gases they consider to be leading to climate change. Now, the point of this video is not to discuss whether greenhouse gases contribute to climate change, or if climate change is going on or not going on, or if NOx leads to climate change. The point of this video is to just talk about the NOx reduction strategies that are basically employed by manufacturers, being forced on them mostly by government agencies. Now, of course, the four molecules or byproducts I talked about coming out of the combustion process was not an exhaustive list. There's all sorts of stuff that comes out of the exhaust pipe, but those are really the emissions that the government is con concerned with, and in this one we're talking about NOx. So, NOx is created in the combustion process by, of course, oxygen, nitrogen, high heat and high pressure. Now, to remove NOx from the exhaust can be tricky because in a diesel engine, you need, of course, heat and, of course, high combustion pressures, which means in order to get rid of NOx, you would have to remove one of the four combustion pressures, heat, nitrogen, or oxygen. Now, nitrogen is everywhere in the air. You can't filter it out of the incoming air and it's going to be present in both NOx and just straight nitrogen coming out of the exhaust as well. Now, one thing that is reduced, though, during the combustion process, even though some is left over, is oxygen. Remember, it's burned during the combustion process, and since you can't filter oxygen out of incoming air, you have to recycle the exhaust, which is mostly oxygen depleted, into your intake system. Hence where we get exhaust gas recirculation. Exhaust is a lower oxygen inert gas compared to the incoming fresh air. So that's why they recycle exhaust gases. So in order to understand the exhaust gas recirculation system, you need to understand the components with it. And it's an extremely simple system. So basically you already have an exhaust manifold or an exhaust stream with a exhaust system. So all you have to do is basically run a hose from that system and run it into your intake. Now, of course, it's not quite that simple. You don't want unrestricted amounts of exhaust going into the intake, so you need some sort of metering valve that will either allow none, a small amount, or a lot, 
of exhaust gas into the intake. This would be an exhaust or an EGR valve, and that is typically controlled by your engine ECM. Now, the other problem with, well, there's lots of problem with exhaust, but a big problem with it is it's always hot. Since exhaust is hot and you don't want hot gases going into your intake, you need to find a way to cool it down. So you get what they call an EGR cooler. Now the EGR cooler is there to cool the exhaust before it gets into the intake. Typically this is done by running a heat exchanger. Some, think of it as a radiator or like a heater core that is coolant filled that helps cool the exhaust before it gets into the intake. And that's pretty much it. There's usually a sensor or two, one to measure the EGR temperature and the other to measure the amount of EGR. But other than that, that's about it. All right, so now you understand what the EGR system does and you understand the components behind it. At this point, I could just say, well, that's it. That's all you need to know about the EGR system. It doesn't have any problems. Well, I could say that, but then I'd also have to say, I lied. So there are typically two problems with an EGR system that develop. One of them is our friend, the C in diesel. C12 H24, that would be carbon. There's a lot of carbon typically in the exhaust system. It's gonna be full of carbon in that exhaust stream. Now, what is the problem with carbon? It builds up. That's why a DPF has to burn off the carbon because it will slowly plug. Well, what are you doing to your EGR cooler and your intake when you're running it and all this exhaust gas is getting poured into the intake while well, you're filling everything with carbon. It's very bad for the system. It can lead to restrictions in flow, EGR problems, cracked EGR coolers. There's a host of problems. One of the other big problems with the EGR system is the EGR cooler itself. Since it gets plugged with carbon a lot and it ex is exposed to extremely high temperature exhaust gases, they can crack and leak typically internally, and you can get exhaust gases into your coolant, you can get coolant into your intake, you can get coolant out of your exhaust. There's a lot of problems. Not only that, a lot of the times the EGR coolers are routed high on the engine, typically on top of the cylinder head, which is the highest point in the engine. Well, what is lighter, air or coolant? Air. Now, air can get trapped in the EGR cooler, and how would that happen? Well, if you drain your coolant to replace a hose or do anything, air enters the system, and if you don't vacuum fill it or purge it properly, it can crack the EGR cooler. Alrighty, now, I do a lot of videos on Caterpillar, obviously, but that does not mean I think cat engines are the only engines out there. They're always the best engines. There are good things and there are bad things about Caterpillar engines. Now, before I get started on the CGI system, which is CAT's version of the EGR system, CAT's idea for the CGI system was excellent. It's a very good system for EGR handling. However, the same engineers that came up with that came up with the Arthead system, which was a horrible failure, at least on the truck engines that they didn't really ever fix. Now, what is the difference between a straight EGR system and the CAT CGI system? Why is it so much better? That's what we're gonna discuss right now. So the reason CAT does not just call their EGR system EGR and they call it CGI is because CGI stands for clean gas induction. Now, why is it just clean gas induction? Why isn't it just EGR? Well, remember we're dealing with large amounts of soot and carbon in the exhaust stream what if there was a way to filter that out? If there was only a way to pull exhaust from a filtered source. Hey, CAT engineers figured out that, hey, there's a DPF on this truck that's gonna get the CGI system. All the exhaust after the DPF should be carbon free, or at least extremely low carbon compared to the exhaust before the DPF. So CAT, instead of just pulling their exhaust off the exhaust manifold, which nearly all other manufacturers did, and CAT does now on their equipment, they decided, hey, why don't we just run a hose off the back of the DPF and send it to the CGI cooler, EGR cooler, and then run that into the intake. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be a lot better idea? Yes, yes it would. In my experience working on the after treatment systems for the cats, the CGI systems almost never had problems. They occasionally, the CGI cooler could leak. 
you might get a bad sensor, but in general, CGI system had way less problems than the other parts of the cat regen system or any of their other systems. And compared to Cummins, they had a lot less problems, same with Detroit, than Cat did. Not only that, Cat ran their EGR slash CGI cooler lower in the block. They ran it down by the oil cooler, about center line of the block. So air was less likely to get trapped in the CGI cooler than it was when you run it up high on top of the cylinder head. So that is really the main difference between the CGI and the EGR is where it pulls the exhaust from and where they mounted the EGR cooler, CGI cooler. That is very simple fixes, but however, took care of pretty much all of their, at least NOx reduction strategies, and it ran a lot better than the other manufacturers did. There are some problems with the CGI system compared to a traditional EGR system. The biggest one I would say is that you now have a longer tube running from your exhaust system to your CGI cooler, which in itself isn't a bad thing. The problem is it looks like an exhaust tube, and most people don't know what the CGI tube is or what it does. Of course, if you have a cracked exhaust tube, you're not going to damage your engine necessarily, but a bad CGI tube would. And I've seen this several times where it'll be cracked. Remember, when the CGI system is open, meaning engine, the engine's pulling in CGI air, it can actually suck dirt in into the intake at that point because the CGI system is only, it's supposed to be sealed off. It's only supposed to be exposed to clean air after the DPF, but if you have a crack in that tube, which typically runs very low to the ground, it can suck in dirt and contaminants. And when it does that, it can wipe out your engine. I've seen that more than once. So the other problem, although it's not really an inherent problem, it's just by nature, the CGI system does not build pressure. Most of the newer EGR systems pull in exhaust gases on the boosted side of the engine. So you typically need a little bit of higher pressure, even if they're using a Venturi, to suck in some of that exhaust gas into the intake. Now the CAT CGI system pulled it before the turbo, which is a slight vacuum area because the CGI gas is being pulled after the DPF, it's basically a zero pressure environment. It's basically just slightly higher than ambient air pressure. So if you were trying to force those gases on the boosted side of the engine, you'd have a really, really hard time. If you pull it right off the exhaust manifold though, you can build significant pressure enough to help force it into the intake. So that's my video discussing the CAT CGI system and why I think it was a better system than a straight EGR system. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.